Hello, everybody. So happy to be here to speak to you again Thursday afternoon. Um, second Thursday of the year. Already there. My God, is time flying. Soon it'll be Christmas again. Uh, so I had a pretty eventful beginning to the week. All right. Monday. Monday, if you're not doing what I'm doing on a Monday... You're uh, you're you're never gonna make it in this life. You're never, gonna, you are. I'm always gonna be one step ahead of you if you're not able to do what I'm. The story that I'm about to tell you that happened on uh, on this Monday. So, I had a work party. Now I I work for a restaurant that's like a big part of a. It's like a part of a big restaurant group. So they got a lot of money. So it was at a really really nice place in Midtown. And uh, a bunch of people from all the other restaurants in this really nice event center. Uh, even the name of the place is nice. It's called Lavon. Lavon Midtown. It sounds like a very classy, nice place. Is, is that a bakery? Is it a bakery? It sounds like it could be. Like a French bakery. No, this this was not a bakery. <laughs> this, uh, this was a a really nice event space. It was big, open. The walls were like uh, they had like computer generated images, like really cool shit playing the whole time. The music was good. They had this uh, VR thing where a bunch of people could sit, and it it like moves. It's what's that like four D, five D, something like that. Like an animatronic thing? Yeah, like you sit on... I don't know what it was. It was like a ride. And you sit on it and it moves and whatever. And uh, so... But before we even get to that, I worked on Monday. So right after work, my plan was to go get a haircut. You heard that right. Uh, to get a haircut. <laughs> yeah. Now, I went to a place close to where I work because I was kind of pressed for time. I wanted to go to the gym in between. And I went to so a just too much stuff in your schedule. There was a bunch of shit. Like I really didn't need to go get a haircut. Like I'm bald, but <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to line up the beard and, and, uh, and look good for this event. And I went and it was, it was this like Slavic woman, this Russian lady who just, she sat me down and didn't listen at all to what I wanted for my beard and it, it came out okay after the fact but she took off too much like I wanted to keep it big and fat but uh, she's like even out you want to even out with like scissors and I'm like yeah sure because people have done that but you keep it and she's like zing, zing, took mad of it off took it way too far but whatever all right uh, I get up and she says it was $50 $50 to uh, cut my beard and shave my already shaved head <laughs> Um, cut my beard more than I wanted it to, and um, and it was fifty bucks. And luckily, I had made like sixty dollars in cash tips when I left work. Luckily, I could spend that there when I could have uh, used that elsewhere. Um, so, uh, moral of the story of the beginning of this story is: don't let women cut your hair ever. It's a stupid idea. I thought it would be okay because she was like a hard Slavic woman, but it was it was the wrong choice. Yeah, I feel like sometimes if sometimes for the beard, I feel like they don't even charge you if it's just like a minor cleanup too. Yeah, yeah. This lady went, and it wasn't like she went with the straight razor. She didn't do anything special. She yeah. didn't lotion my face. She didn't do anything. She uh, she just cut my beard. She cut my beard wrong and said, "He give me fifty dollars." Did they even do like hot towel on the head? They no? did. They did the hot towel. Okay. They did All do right. the hot towel. Um, again, against my wishes, I didn't. I wasn't like, "Give me a hot towel." Yeah, you just wanted the razor. Yeah, I just wanted my my shit smooth, and then my beard lined up, and my eyebrows lined up, which she didn't do either. She just like went over them, and like trimmed them a little bit, like mm. down. She little, didn't like line them up. Spit and wipe. Yeah, she um she basically robbed me. I got robbed. I went to that place and totally got robbed. And uh and and on the way out, I gave the woman um $53 because you got to at least tip. <laughs> so I I gave her uh yeah, three extra bucks. Um and I was very upset. I was I was angry at that. And uh I took that energy and I went to the gym. 
and I did legs, which was good. It was successful, quick workout. Then as soon as I got home, now mind you, this is this place uh, that this party had an open bar, so I really didn't have to worry about drinking. I didn't have to worry about saving money. Open bar and free food the whole time. And uh, but me in the back of my mind, I'm like, I gotta get. I'm about to be around a bunch of people. I gotta get ready for this. So I made a drink here. I made some disgusting gin cocktail with like kiwi and soda water. It was horrible, um, but I finished it. And I pretty much pre-gamed here alone. Like I drank that one drink kind of fast because I needed to shower too. We can't. If I lived here alone, I would walk around butt ass naked with the shower running, drinking. But you can't. A little shower drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do that. Totally. I used to do that in Connecticut all the time. Uh, but nonetheless, I um, I got ready here, got pretty cross faded, and uh, and and headed over, headed on out. And I was uh, dressed pretty well, I'd like to say. I don't normally uh, doll up, but I, um, I was dressed pretty good because I had full intentions of uh, banging somebody. <laughs> which, which uh, for those of you who've ever worked in a restaurant and, and had like a holiday party or something, that's usually where it happens. Was it like, a female human? No, 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 no. It was a, uh, it was a transgender hamster. <laughs> it's my co-worker's pet I was going to uh, fuck it to death actually I was going to fuck it to death but it likes when I dress nice it, <laughs> it wouldn't have uh, appreciate it. yeah exactly or or they sorry not it they anyway I uh, anyone who's ever uh, worked in a restaurant knows that if there's some kind of party where people are drinking uh, it's some there's probably going to be some filth some some sin. People are going to be engaging in sin. Let's say that. Um, so I was at least preparing for that in the back of my mind. I may not have uh, gone there, even though I just said I was going with the full intentions <laughs> of begging somebody. That's but, why uh, the barbershop was $50, because they, they did your pubes, too. Yeah, they knew. They were like, this guy. They cleaned he's, up the pubes. <laughs> the pubes. The, they waxed the, your taint. Of course. The whole, the whole thing. So you didn't get robbed. You got a good deal. Yeah, I got fifty dollars to get my balls waxed. I had an offer. Side note: One time, I had an offer when I was working at Mohegan Sun. This lady was like, "Would you, would you get your balls and asshole and gooch waxed?" And I'm like, "Would I?" I mean, for I, free? I. Well, that's the thing. She's like, "I, I want to start offering it because she does like sh- that shit for women. She, she waxes women's balls and dick." <laughs> but um, no, yeah, she was. She wanted me to. She wanted me to be like the test dummy, um, but I never saw her again after that. So, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to cash in. So, maybe in another life. I'm <laughs> I'm at this event, and uh, and like I said, open bar. I drank a pretty hefty gin cocktail. I'm kind of I'm I'm buzzing already as I walk in there. Now, again, for those of you who've never worked in a restaurant, you shouldn't offer restaurant employees an open bar, especially one that serves shots. Like we were able to get shots at this open bar, and that's not—that's never good. You shouldn't do. People who work in restaurants are absolute lunatics, because that's kind of what the job is. Like you have to be a lunatic for four hours a night. It's just mayhem. Whether you're a cook or a host or whoever, if you're in a restaurant and it's busy, you literally just have to be a lunatic the whole time, probably on drugs. Um, it, it, People who work in that industry are very fragile and, and uh, they succumb to substances very easily. So I see all my friends there, or all my coworkers, whatever. So immediately we got to do a shot. And um, I had been drinking gin. I got a gin and tonic. I got a gin and tonic with a side of a vodka shot, which is um, never good. Vodka shot is what you drink if you've given up. If you've given up, you drink a vodka shot. Um, but I was with people, so it's different. It's not as, it's not as bad, you know. If you're drinking vodka shots alone, then you should uh, reevaluate. But when you're with other people, it's fine. Anyway, we uh, so we're we're putting them back like big time, and I probably got there around ten o'clock, and uh, no, maybe nine thirty, and um, between that and the weed pen that I had and the weed pen that my coworker had. 
and the mixing. That was the other thing. Because I was drinking gin. I'm doing vodka shots. I'm doing... Uh, all they had was like the brown tequila, which I like normally. But Mezcal. we were... No, 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 no. It was the other one. Uh, Reposado. Reposado, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was Cuervo, so it was really bad. And uh, we were doing shots of those. Uh, long story short, I went to the bathroom probably around midnight and uh, and and threw up in the bathroom. But it wasn't one of those good throw ups where you puke and rally. Yeah. This was this was puke and uh puke more. <laughs> this was puke and call an Uber immediately because <laughs> you can <laughs> contemplate life. Things are going to get bad. So I uh I puke and I step out. Now mind you, oh this is another thing I should I should throw in there. Pretty much no food that I ate. And the whole thing was catered with good, like there was sushi, there was all kinds of stuff, dessert and uh, chicken and biscuits and all this shit. It looked fantastic, but I wasn't there for that. I was there for the uh, for the alcohol, like everybody else. Uh, the alcohol and the whores. So I, uh, it's, it's like 12, 12, uh, probably 12, if we're being honest, because the thing ended at one and I felt like I left early because I did. And uh, I step out and I try to eat something. I grab like a cookie and I eat like three bites of it and I, it just doesn't do anything. So I'm like, all right, we got to abandon ship. We got to call this Uber. So I call the Uber and I was going to go outside to smoke a cigarette, which probably would have made me throw up more. But in my mind, I'm like, this is, this is going to work. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> this cigarette's going to bring me back to life. Um, but he was there pretty much immediately. So... I got in his car and I immediately put the window down and sit back and I have the cigarette in my hand. I'm I got my fist like balled up. Then I'm like, oh, and he starts driving and it feels horrible. So I, I, <laughs> I roll the window up and I'm like, oh. but then it, now I feel horrible. Like <clears throat> when I first sat and the window was down, I was like, okay, this is bad. Let me try and fix this. And then I shut the window and that made me feel way worse because there was no air. I was just in the back seat. <laughs> So I immediately put it back down. And this is about five minutes into the ride. And um, we were in Midtown, and he brought me to Brooklyn, which, what would you say, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 40? At midnight, yeah, probably. It, yeah. So uh, I pretty much, once I opened the window the second time, I vomited pretty much the entire ride home. Pretty much the whole time home, I was outside just hanging out of his window vomiting people watching me cigarette in my hand the whole time it's like on tunnels and bridges <laughs> Dude, going over the williamsburg bridge i'm just uh, uh. it's a bumpy one too and then oh dude and he's flying he wants me out of the car so bad <laughs> he wants me out of the car so bad i didn't get any in his car but a bunch on the side of his car and um in between heaves, I'm just sitting back down and just groaning in the back like a fucking, like a bear that just got shot. And I'm like, Ugh. and then just back out the window, Ugh. cigarette, whole time in my hand. And um, you're smoking it too. No, no. <laughs> I was gonna say you might as well at that point. Oh man, that would have been awesome. Now uh, I get the, he finally gets me here and uh, or back home. <laughs> and this is the best part of the whole night, all right? This, uh, the whole ride, neither of us said anything to each other. Like, he didn't say anything to me while I was vomiting. I didn't say I'm going to be sick. I didn't say anything. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as soon as he dropped, as soon as he stopped me here, I just got out, didn't say anything, and left. Like, <laughs> that was the whole interaction. I didn't say anything. He didn't say anything to me, um, which I thought was hilarious. And then I just ran up here. Fell asleep in my jeans. I had to take my my uh, top off because I threw up all over it. And I woke up at 7.30 in the morning. Has that ever happened to you when you drink like a whole lot? You're I wake up a few times, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't go back to sleep. I woke up at 7.30 mm -hmm. and I, uh, I, I felt the compulsion to get up and bring my jacket to a dry cleaner. Like I felt like I had to do it <laughs> like right then. And I was also still drunk. Like from 7.30, this, is the this was the longest I had been 
still drunk from the night after. From 7.30 to like 3 in the afternoon, I was still like <laughs> stupid and goofy. I had eaten. I had drank water. <laughs> I, uh, dude, I went to the gym. I went to the gym. Oh, you still didn't sweat it out? No. Lifting heavy ass weights. Like I was doing bent over rows with like 245 pounds. I felt invincible. But I was just alone, giggling <laughs> off to the side, <laughs> throwing weights around. And I'm like, dude, I went on the I went on the stairmaster, sweat like a pig, still came off. I'm like, God. Which goes to show I probably uh I might have might have drank too much the night before. <laughs> I might have uh overdone it. But I tell all of that to tell you this, to reiterate my initial point. If you're not doing that's the beginning of my week. That's the beginning of my week. That's how I get after it. All these guys telling you, you know, you 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 gotta you gotta get up and grind. You gotta do this, but nobody's living it. Nobody's living it the way I am. Drinking uh, for free like an animal, and then taking an Uber you can't really pay for. I mean, a forty dollar Uber is kind of unreasonable. That's a lot of money. It was forty dollars, and uh, <laughs> and I was at a free event. I paid fifty dollars for a bald haircut. And and a forty dollar Uber to get home, almost a hundred dollars for a free event. Uh, oh, pr- pretty much a hundred dollars because I paid eighteen dollars to get my jacket cleaned. Mm. So <laughs> over a hundred dollars, if we're being honest, at a free event. That is uh, that's commitment on a level that no you guys uh, should be striving for <laughs> if <laughs> if you want to be anything like me. Which uh, after that story, I'm sure you all want to uh, after. So yeah, that was that was my beginning to the week. That was my Monday. Most people uh, on a Monday, if they drink, it's at a um, it's usually a half off bottle of wine somewhere at a nice dinner. Maybe Monday night football game. Or something. Monday night football, sure. Having a beer, but. Um, yeah, it shouldn't the the people who put that thing together probably shouldn't have allowed a bunch of degenerate restaurant workers to drink that much for free. Like the fact that there were shots there, that's that's not good. That's like putting a gun in front of a serial killer. That is that's bad. It's um but again, you got to have stories. What what are you going to leave? When we leave, when our, when, when our souls leave this physical realm and these skin meat sacks. But the Uber driver remembers you. The Uber driver's got, that's the thing, right? How many people are going to remember me from that night? The Uber driver, the other people that saw me <laughs> stumbling and rolling my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the hairstylist that you only gave $3 tip. That's right. She's going to remember me. She probably said, I hope this guy has a fucking awful night. <laughs> I hope he fucking eats shit. But that's what I get for getting a haircut in the Upper West Side. I shouldn't have. Uh, I should have just came back to Brooklyn and got the haircut. Because, I mean, $50. Good Lord. That is. That's horrifying. That's horrifying. I used to go to a place in New London that was like a. They would do every. And this is when I had hair. They would do everything. Like 12 bucks. No, no. I mean, I would pay the 50 at that place because uh, it was worth it. And I would only go like, I don't know, once every five weeks or something. In Suffolk, I had a place that was $12. That is nice. Nice $12 that's haircut. a long time ago now. I guess that's like five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. Then I moved to Queens, and I was appalled at paying $30. Right. And now it's like a regular thing for me to pay at least 30 bucks. Yeah, that's normal. 30 bucks. I remember um, years ago, back home in Providence, there was this barbershop called Bob's Barbershop, and it was all black guys that cut hair in there, and um, but it was pretty cheap, and my grandmother, who's uh, Italian, <laughs> and my grandfather, who was also Italian, which also comes with some other characteristics, uh, maybe not the same as, but akin to racism and uh they i remember my grandmother brought my old italian grandfather there because the haircuts were cheap it was probably like 15 bucks and um that was the talk for a while that was the that was the talk at the table 
that Nono went to, went to a hood ass barber shop <laughs> <laughs> to get his hair cut uh, for cheap. Yeah, I remember one time my grandfather brought me to this really old guy who uh, who would always cut my ears. He would cut the back of my ears, and it was it fucking hurts. yeah, it's not good. What the fuck? But he was like an old. He was like the quintessential old barber who was probably missing a couple fingers, got a glass eye, old as hell. What barber shops are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> missing fingers? <laughs> yeah, his name was uh, Stumpy or something. He lost him in the war. There was one place I went to as a kid that uh, I would always get stuck with the one lady barber. And uh, she had a big like belly. So when she'd cut my hair, her fucking big giant belly would be like on my arm. On your arm. So uncomfortable the whole time. Staying like this. Yeah. And it's just like a big giant fat woman belly on me. (laughs) She's like, so sweetheart, you're doing good in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) That was almost like her exact voice. (laughs) I gotta go smoke quick. Can you sit in the chair? I'll put the TV on. More or less, yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Well, what's worse, that or or when the barber puts his balls on your arm? That's a real thing. That's definitely happening. Yeah. I'm usually not on the handrest, <laughs> though. I'm usually yeah. in here. Okay. So keep, she was keep... so big that she could get you oh, even yeah. when you were... Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I haven't had a barber with a big enough dick and balls mm. to be able to do that. Not even the black own. barber? Yeah, right, right. My barber's actually from Trinidad, the one that I have now. And I fucking cheated on him with some... Slavic whore, yeah, some slut. But anyway, yeah, that was that was my beginning of the week. That was my beginning of the week. Um, if you're not doing that, you're just you're gonna be left behind. You're gonna be left behind in the dust in the race to the top. That's right. Um, now, another thing I wanted to talk about before we get into the you know the normal shit we do the uh, the new trend of fasting. It's kind of unnerving, you know. It's kind of weird. Like, obviously, there's there's um, always trend diets, and I am a I am a fan of intermittent fasting. I'm a fan of not eating immediately when you wake up. I mean, what <laughs> when you really think about it, that is kind of a sick thing that we do. I'm not gonna say it's propaganda, but the fact that we like we've been told that you have to eat something in the morning. Like right when you wake up, just eat. All right, you've woken up. Eat now. Eat something. Shove something in your face. You're awake. You've gone eight hours without eating. Well, really, in this country and in this world, you've gone four hours without eating, and you've slept four hours now. Eat. Eat something immediately. You've done nothing. You've done nothing to earn it. You've done. <laughs> Not saying that you got to earn your meals, but it's just a funny concept that you. You wake up and you eat, and 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 the breakfast cuisine is nothing that seems energy building. If that makes sense, like when you go to a diner, you go to a to a breakfast place, and you eat French toast with caramel and bananas and fucking Oreos and uh, insulin, and <laughs> and they deep fry it. In the in the fat that they sliced off the back of a thirty year old hog, uh, that I don't know. That's not really conducive to a good work day in my mind. That's not uh, that's not something that I want to, you know. And and I like the idea of not eating immediately. I do. I like uh, waiting. I usually wait till about two to eat my first meal. That's also because. When I feel like I developed that in college because the beginning of the days are always super busy. And, um, you know, you, you just, you're too busy. You're too busy uh, protesting when you're in college. See, when you're in college, you don't have enough time to eat because you're too busy uh, protesting which words are the right ones to use. That's the thing. You're supposed to be sitting around talking to other like-minded people college students about different words and what colors you're going to dye your hair and what acronyms that you can add to your sexuality. That's what you're supposed to be. You don't have time to eat when you're in college. Um, so yeah, I think I developed that. Do you, when, do you um, 
eat immediately in the morning, <laughs> like when you I wake up? Yeah, I don't really like breakfast. Yeah. Um, occasional, like if I'm hungry, maybe I'll I'll stop somewhere and get like, you know, a snack, like granola bar maybe, or mm-hmm. donut from Dunkin' Donuts or something like that along those lines. Right. But your first meal is usually later? Yeah, it's like usually actual meal, like twelve o'clock for lunch. Nice, yeah. Well, I think you start your days earlier than I do, because you have a, a real job. Yeah, I start at seven <laughs> every day. Yeah, see that fucking blows. That, not for you, but in my, in my in my world, that uh, that sucks. <laughs> getting up is getting up that early. Um, why do I think? Okay, forget it. Sorry, <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it I guess that that works because if I wake up at I don't know ten, what's ten to two? That's like five hours, right? Something like that. Yeah, it's the same thing as seven to twelve. So yeah, same shit. Um, but yeah, the the new thing, the new mainstream thing is completely fasting. Um, not new. I shouldn't say new. It's been around, but it is mainstream. Uh, now, especially since Dana White, look, you got Dana White up. He uh, he put out the thing. Does it say how long he did it for? Yeah, he did an eighty-six hour one. This was in November, I think. The guy who started this whole trend, Gary Brecker. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of him, but that's why Dana White was decided to do this. Oh yeah, he's this uh, Gary genetic- He's a geneticist and like this brilliant fitness guru guy mm-hmm. and um so what he can what he does is he'll take like a vial of your blood and saliva and analyze your dna and pretty much predict when you're gonna die this was the guy that did that to him yeah so gotcha. i remember hearing that story. he told dana that he's gonna die from this in say 10 years or whatever and that kind of like made dana jump into a whole like revamping his fitness and his eating habits and everything right and he even like ju- he didn't look at like dana white's like um medical history or anything he, just by his blood and his uh spit was able to pr- tell him exactly like how his ancestors died damn just by his dna yeah and his current like health levels his current path yeah hmm interesting i've heard uh uh, somebody who was probably on drugs talk about him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not not saying Joe that. Rogan. No, it was uh, somebody that I know, uh, and he was definitely on drugs. And he told me to he told me to look this guy up because he says that um, he says that this guy Gary Brecka says to hang out outside barefoot, like in the in the grass. I don't know if that's Gary Brecker. Maybe. I think that's what... I, I can th- I can fact check that for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's something about the polarity of... of some... Yeah, I've heard of people doing that. Grounding yourself. Yeah, and he's just like, stand out there. And meanwhile, this guy's bouncing around on coke. Like, literally. <laughs> <laughs> like, bouncing around. Fucking not... He's just, he's just vomiting at the mouth telling me about this guy. I wrote the guy's name down. And I feel like it's, it's, it might be this dude. Maybe not. Um, but uh, yeah, he told me on his podcast he did mention grounding. Yeah. So yeah, maybe him. But there's, there's a lot of things that that guy that told you about that. Yeah. That this guy <laughs> <laughs> preaches is definitely not doing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I mean, and uh, yeah, this guy's uh, on drugs. Like actually, the guy that told me the story. I'm sure this guy, Gary Brecker. Has some uh, has some legitimacy. It's all backed on science too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> he's he's kind of like uh, like an Andrew Huber- Huberman. Yeah, know. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not denying anything that I mean. Obviously, Dana White, it worked. He uh, he looks he's shredded in that fucking picture. Yeah, he's I, also rich. He, that's the other thing. Is he can afford to go talk to this guy? Like this this guy's probably on a mountain floating with his legs crossed. Fucking yeah! Look at that! Look at Dana White! Look how fat he was! Look how fat and disgusting Dana White used to be. Then he went to go see this guy, and he did an eighty-six hour fast. Damn. Yeah. So here's here's my thing. All right. This is obviously good. There's tons of science behind it, but 
the uh I don't I don't know if I like what it's breeding us for. Right? <laughs> the idea of just being like not eating. How long can you go without eating? Try to not eat. Just don't eat. Don't eat. We'll keep buying the farmland. He has like a program that don't you do eat. you do seventy two hours, but yeah. I think the catch is is to get you to buy his products also because he has like these like special electrolytes yeah. that count in the fast and all like this chicken broth that you can cheat on the fast with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's part of the gimmick is to get people to buy his shit. Sure. Why not? Come on. If you're a genius, why be a genius and make no money? Why? Why? <laughs> you got to make you got to make some kind of money. Right, you gotta if you're gonna get the word out to people, get get a T-shirt made, get it to get some electrolytes made, you know, get uh, get Dana White. <laughs> it's just salt to make a video. I know that's the thing. You could just do it with salt. Like I've seen people do the fast with with just salt. Um, but it's funny hearing hearing people talk about it because again, I'm sure it's all backed by science, but. Most people who are doing it are just seeing videos and whatever, and they're like, "Yeah, you don't get cancer." <laughs> yeah, it's rich people. Yeah, finding out what it's like to be poor. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what it is. They're like, "Wow, this is what it's like. This sucks." Oh, I'm going to sleep hungry. Oh. oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine. Thank God this isn't my real life. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God we foreclosed on those homes at the at the bank. <laughs> <laughs> we got a short Disney. Yeah. Thank God I'm thinking so money. clearly. I'm so hungry. <laughs> short Disney stock. I know. They're like, why? What, I feel like being hungry is a good thing. I feel so clear headed. Why are all these people homeless? <laughs> why don't the homeless come up with good ideas? I have all these ideas. Yeah. No, it's 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 uh, it's again. We were just, you know, before we even started this, we were saying how we kind of want to try it. Like, I want to try it. I just want to see. I might. I might try it. Yeah, it's hard, dude. Not eating for mad for that many days. I did it. I've done it for like a full day, and that's probably not on purpose. Like I haven't tried, but I feel like I've gone over twenty four hours not eating. I think because for uh, for work, I'm going to Vegas in a couple of weeks. When I get back, I think I'm going to try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe forty eight hours. So ball out in Vegas, go wild, and then. Cleanse. Yeah. Come back and cleanse. Yeah. That's what I was thinking for New Year's. When I when I was done with New Year's, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do the fast. And uh and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it. Yeah. I uh yeah. Instead I um I did whatever I was doing before New Year's, which was uh drinking and eating and indulging but we're back on the horse now i'll say that we are back on the horse if you couldn't tell from my uh from my initial story we're uh we got it we're under control we're in complete control um but yeah i am i would like to see what it's like on the fast i uh i would like to see like you said, how long I can last as a as a poor person. <laughs> that was part of the motivation behind it because after the holidays, I'm, you know, my pockets are raped. Like yeah. I'm, I'm fairly broke. It's fair. So it's like maybe I'm gonna ha- maybe I have to do it out of necessity. <laughs> like I'll have to fast to save money. You know, that could be good. That could be good. That could be a good thing. That, uh, <clears throat> but it's just like anything else, right? Like. Fast, like not eating is trendy for the same reason that like hiking is trendy. Like hiking was just something that you did. <laughs> like you just, if you got to go somewhere, you just hiked. You just fucking. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That used to be people's way of getting somewhere. Right. And now we're like, let's hike and take pictures yeah. and wear Patagonia jackets and shit. <laughs> like that's the same thing with fasting. It's you know we have all this food. Let's uh, let's try to stop eating some of it. Let's go horseback riding on the beach. Yeah, yeah, like our ancestors did. They used to drink a bottle of white Zinfandel and and wear all white linen and ride up and down the beach in the Caribbean. <laughs> um, fasting, fasting. Same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, just imagine it. Because they didn't fast. know how to make a, a spear and get the fish yet. Yeah, precisely. Imagine just a straight alcohol fast. 
instead of a water fast, an 82-hour <laughs> alcohol fast. It's called suicide. <laughs> <laughs> you just call it that when people are like, dude, why are you still... Why? <laughs> instead of a bender, you just call it a fast. <laughs> this is an 83-hour drug and alcohol fast. It's just 12 ounces of vodka every two hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would say, like, you could, you know, you could eat mushrooms and, and fast because you're not hungry when you eat mushrooms. Like, if I, like, I ate mushrooms last Saturday and, um... It'd probably go fast too, right? It's probably only like four trips. Wait, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> the the fast would go so fast. It'd go quickly <laughs> on mushrooms. Uh, actually, the opposite happened. Mushrooms are fucking slow time. It's kind of crazy. Like, I remember we watched the UFC when Connor beat the fuck out of Cowboy. Mm-hmm. And we were all we were all tripping, and we were like, "Dude, why is this fucking taking so long? This is forever." <laughs> and then he comes out and just destroys Cerrone. And it was really fast, but it felt long. It was so fast <laughs> that felt fast. <laughs> we're like, "Damn, I wish the mushrooms worked then." But yeah, you don't eat the next day, whatever day it was, Sunday. I uh, I ate a bunch like to make up for it. So. Um, yeah, instead of a water fast, just do a drug fast. Just do drugs so much so that you're not hungry. Do uh, or like do the Joaquin Phoenix and just smoke cigarettes and lose weight to become the Joker. Is that how he did that? I think so. He just smoked cigs and ate apples, like ate and no, no, no. Um, that's a big thing too. Just apples and water. I yeah, know, I know. Like McConaughey did that. For that's the, uh, yeah. What movie was it? He Dallas lost Buyers Club. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, yeah. he had to. He had to hiv. He had to get full blown AIDS. I met a guy with the HIV recently. I didn't fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a comedian. He's actually really funny. Um, but yeah, apparently you can apparently you can live pretty comfortably now. They got meds for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I watched the other day? I know we're we're diverging, um, but you know what I watched the other day? It's kind of hilarious. Have you seen the Naked Gun movies? No. Uh, have you watched Airplane? Airplane, yeah. Okay, so you know that. What's his name? Leslie Nielsen, I think that's his name. He's the main character. The, the, the dude with the white hair. Shirley, Shirley. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He, uh, so there's that movie Naked Gun, which is a spoof on like James Bond. Okay. And the first one, OJ is one of the stars. OJ Simpson. Before the murder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was before. I think the movie came out in 86. And he got... He got Arraigned in uh, in ninety four, I think yeah. I looked it up yesterday. And uh, the movie's hilarious, but it's so much funnier seeing O.J. Simpson be an actor uh, in the movie. That makes it funnier than the actual movie. Like the movie's funny and it still holds up. Like it's so goofy. Those Naked Gun movies are the best. But the fact that O.J. is like a main character, he's like the main. He's like this guy's right hand man. Yeah, see O.J. Simpson, Pris- Priscilla. Priscilla Presley. Wow, that's a crazy cla- uh, crazy cast. Just those two. We don't even need to see anybody else. They don't even show O.J. Oh, there he is. See, going down the stairs, all fucked up. Yeah, look how fun that is. They're just fucking O.J. up this whole movie. Slapsticky. Yeah, it's great. He gets shot at the beginning of it. And uh, the whole movie is trying to figure out who did it and why they did it. It's based it it's based all around him. <clears throat> it's kind of, it's it's funnier than anything else in the movie because you see him. He's in the opening scene. It's uh, you know they're talking about killing people throughout the movie, and he's just there. And it's just it's it's great. It's beautiful, and I can't wait for him to be on ESPN because I'm sure that's going to happen. I am positive that that's going to happen at some point. If he hasn't OJ? been already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he hasn't been on ESPN yet, it's going to happen. I am Is he in prison convinced. right now? No. He's on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he's on Twitter. Hey, Twitter world. I thought he got... Uh, he went to... Pr- maybe he did go to jail for a little bit because... Uh, for kidnapping. Was it kidnapping? Yeah. No, I thought someone stole his memorabilia <clears throat> from his house and was trying to sell it at their store and he smashed into the store and took his shit back? I think he stole his memorabilia that got sold legally. I think. 
So and he sold it to someone and then stole it? I think so. I think that's how it went. And I think he locked the guy in a closet or something. <laughs> and that's kidnapping. That's technically kidnapping. Yeah. You put somebody in somewhere that they don't want to be. Um, like a doctor. Yeah. Cocksucker. Yeah. See, I learned that from him. Joey, Joey Diaz. Diaz. Un- yeah. Underrated philosopher in this world. Um, but yeah, if y'all want a good laugh, go ahead and watch that movie if you haven't seen it yet. It's fucking O.J. Simpson hanging out, being a slapstick fucking goofball in that movie. They should cast him in more stuff nowadays, after the fact, because he's fun now. He's fun now. If you watch him on Twitter, he's fun. He pulls up on a golf cart. He says, hey, Twitter world, and then he he talks about the NFL and he talks about the current state of it, and he probably has some good stuff to say. You just got to look past the fact that he murdered a woman horribly with a broke a knife off in a person. You have to look. You have to look past that fact. You have to look past the fact. Well, I mean, he didn't kill anybody. If we're being honest, he didn't. This is all speculative. This is just. This is satire. That's what we do here. Uh, we the the court of law didn't. You know, he he didn't go to jail. He didn't go to jail. They didn't convict him. So he should be allowed on Twitter, and he should be allowed in movies. He should be allowed in, uh, he should be a bailiff in a courtroom. He should be on Judge Steve Harvey's show as the bailiff. So he did do nine years for it. Yes, he did. He was in, he was in there for a while. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't say how this guy acquired the memorabilia, but uh, so the guy had the memorabilia in his hotel room. A group of men broke into that hotel room and held the guy at gunpoint and took the shit. Nice. And they were hired by Simpson? I think he was one of the people. Oh, he was in there with him. <laughs> yeah. He's like, come on, boys. I got a job for us tonight. No, nope, we ain't killing nobody. We just got to go get this thing back because I'm broke as hell. That's funny. He was sentenced to 33 years and ended up doing nine. Damn. Luckiest guy ever. He's one of the luckiest people ever. In terms of the law? It's not bad. Yeah. 33 years. He was. They were going to give him more for that than killing someone. I mean, I don't know what they were going to give him for killing someone. I'd imagine life. Or <laughs> <laughs> you think? Where did he do it? Depends where he did it. L- uh, L.A. L.A. Yeah. Well, so maybe not. I don't know if it's considered L.A. It's Brentwood, California. LA's, L.A.'s pretty liberal. They might have uh, They might have said, you know. 10 years. Sometimes you hear some of these sentences and you're like, that guy got 15 years for that? (laughs) Like, he should be locked away much longer. Like, there's people who, there's sometimes, I have no uh, offhand examples, but sometimes you hear some of these things and you're like, that guy murdered, he blew up a kindergarten class and he's doing six and a half (laughs) years? What the fuck? Yeah, there you go. Killing a white woman. Los Angeles. <clears throat> and I saw him in a uh, another funny thing that I saw him in was like a uh, it was like an Instagram reel of him eating something at a at a at a uh, I don't know like a diner giving a review on it it was hilarious like the people it was made on the account of the restaurant so the owner of the restaurant had to have been like OJ's here let's film him <laughs> while he eats our waffles. <laughs> he's like, mm, it's so good. Y'all got to come down to blah da 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 And uh, I, ain't, I ain't lying. I won't kill you. Yeah, so that's fun. That's fun. Um, I feel like we have to talk about... We got to talk about the Jew tunnels. I feel like... I mean, <laughs> we're in the heartland right now. And I feel like we have to at least bring it up. <clears throat> this is just funny. Like, you guys, it's, <laughs> this is, it's just a funny thing. Regardless of what you think about what's going on, obviously this is a incredibly sen- Jewish and, and Muslim. It's very sensitive and tensions are high. Um, but this is kind of hilarious. There was um, a synagogue here in Brooklyn. And a bunch of these kids who are being called, I think they use the words uh, extreme students or student extremists. Um, they have been borrowing. Yeah, there we go. Group of extremist students. That's the spokesperson for the synagogue. 
and uh, it's a bunch of Hasidic Jews who have been tunneling. They've been burrowing tunnels <laughs> under the uh, under this place, and I don't know what you know. I mean, I I don't know if it says why. Uh, I don't know what they're up to. What what is there to do under? I mean, under the synagogue, right? They f- and they got into like a scuffle with the police. A brawl broke out after police found a group of young men blocking efforts to inspect and fill the tunnel with cement. Some of the men uh, then broke through the wall. Can we see the video? Yeah, let's watch this. Look at this ruckus. Some guys are just filming. So this is what's the synagogue. They just they're causing a real ruckus in here. A lot, a lot of hats. A lot of different hats. A lot of sideburns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. This is a real, this, is, this isn't this is something you see every day. This is a Coen Brothers movie, what we're watching. This is a South Park episode. It's, it is a wild place in this synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> this is nuts, dude. They just had tunnels. What are they doing with tunnels? Why are they burrowing <laughs> under the city? I, I mean, it's a fair question. It's a fair question. If any, <laughs> so I don't, I don't get what they're arrested for. Is I, that not allowed? The tunneling? I, I mean, I don't think so. You might fuck up the infrastructure. Scroll down. I think it says what exactly they were. They were charged with criminal mischief, reckless endangerment, and obstructing governmental administration. Yeah, I mean. You can't just d- dig a fucking hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but then, big who one. was it that was trying to fill it with cement? Was it other people in the right? Uh, yeah. Is that what was going on? Like there I was a group of men digging the tunnel, and then in the same synagogue, they didn't want the tunnel found out about it. Tried to fill it with cement, and that's when the cops had to get involved. I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah, they were trying to <laughs> fill, fill up the tunnel system that they have. That's like that sounds like a third world yeah. thing. That doesn't sound like something that should happen in Brooklyn. Yeah, right. All right, guys, listen, listen. They're giving us a lot of reasons to to ask questions here. They're giving us we're not we're not we love everybody here on the show, um, but there's you know we kind of need to this this is this is strange. Some members who have attended services and functions at the Shabbat have reportedly complained complained about overcrowding in the building one of the men saw so they were to, trying to expand they want to expand the synagogue underground <laughs> underground they want to expand it you got to go through the tunnels to get to the to get to the fucking promised land <laughs> that's crazy just a bunch of jew gophers so they wanted to expand that's really what it was and they didn't have they didn't they didn't have the money to do it that's not true that's not what they're saying in the article, but I mean, why else would they do that? If if you want to make the place bigger, you know, buy another place. You're telling me y'all don't have money? Come on. Who are you fooling? This isn't the Catholic Church here. The Catholic Church doesn't know how to use their money. This is, wow, a deeply religious fringe group within the Shabbat. Uh, believes Rabbi Schneerson is a Jewish Messiah, an idea the mainstream movement rejects. That disagreement is reportedly an element in the tunnel altercation. The building has been closed as inspection of the tunnels has continued. Leave them. It'll be like the catacombs, right? Those are in France, the catacombs. Nobody, yeah, nobody yeah, those in a lot of places. I think. Yeah, I say we leave them. Put them down there. You just go down there. It's a bunch of jewelry fa- jewelry stores. <laughs> Let them finish what they started. I want to know what was gonna, yeah, what the plan was. Yeah, just show me the blueprints. Yeah, right. Maybe they were going to tunnel all the way to um, all the way to Palestine with a treaty. They were Save gonna- on airfare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's that's hilarious when people. You can't be bored in this world, I don't think, anymore. I feel like if you're bored, you're not looking hard enough. Like, the fact that there's... You can just fuck around on Twitter and find out... Have you seen the videos of of the Jewish kid coming out of the sewer? <laughs> no. Dude, it's... Uh, you could probably find it on Twitter. 
however, I don't know if Twitter's good. Twitter will work. Um, I gotta stop hitting this thing. <laughs> the uh, yeah, it's it's the fact that there's Hasidic Jewish people with hats. They're wearing hats underground. They're wearing hats in underground tunnels and scarves, and they're clean. Like what's <laughs> what's going on down there? What is this? Saying Hamas members and Orthodox Jews when they encounter each other in the tunnels. Yeah. Imagine. I know, right? Now they know. Look at that. That's the video. Oh, that's just a picture. Was that him? That's the guy you're talking about? That's the guy I'm talking about. All right. Yeah. He's wearing a dope hat. Sliding out of the sewer. That's not a good look, man. Yeah, see, this is the ruckus. Look at that. They're throwing things. Jesus Christ. Is this before the cops got there? Don't say Jesus Christ. They don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ is definitely not there. What would they say? Moses. Holy Hannah. Oh, this is... Okay. Yeah. Look at that. See, that's them just... Cops are there already. The cops are there, and the brothers are getting crazy. What do you do to... Look at that. Like, how do you police this? <laughs> I know. Stop it. Stop He's just it. shoving people. What is he holding? Is he holding... He's holding like a rope. He He's gonna to lasso, lasso him. He wants to lasso him up. Hog time. That guy's that guy's zip tied up already. Yeah. Yeah, huh? He already got his ass tied up. Oh, he what was that? Spray? Was it spray or did they just They they moved fast. Yeah, he's he's spraying them. Yeah, fuck out of here. Pepper spray. Oh <laughs> man. Make my day, Jew. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They're like, oh my god. The spray, the pepper, <laughs> the pepper's too much. They all just fucking... Notice there's no women. No women. They're at home. What do you think they all told their wives when they went home? <laughs> Listen, Svetlana. The oh, police, they came in today. The, the pepper. The police found our tunnels, Svetlana. How are we ever going to get away? <laughs> <laughs> we were go- what if they're just doomsday preppers? What if they hid behind that alibi? They're like our our doomsday tunnel is under there. It's a different video. Yeah. Oh, they're ragdoll. They're not ragdolling them, but they're they're making an example out of them. Oh, that's him coming out. That's him coming out of the. He looks very happy about it. Though. Yeah, he's like, yes, the river, the revolution. Oh. Yeah, this is it. Look at this. <laughs> what, bro? Come on, you walk down the street. Oh, that's outside. He that's got outside. outside. Yeah, and he's clean. Like, how are you coming out of a sewer grate and you're clean? That's that. That's oh, that. that's what those are. Those are zip tight handcuffs. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yep. Okay. I thought they were. Those are harder ones. to get out of, supposedly. That's what I've heard. Damn, you spraying the fuck out of them. Back Is this on. a mirrored image of what we just watched? Yeah, I think it may. Be. Yeah, it might be. Oh, there's one woman. Oh, she's a cop. <laughs> yeah, so she doesn't count. Ha uh-huh. ha. No women in this place. Just big beards. Who else is filming? Just all of them. They're all filming. Look at this. Are they allowed to touch electronics? They won't. <laughs> Those are Amish it people. A, it was a real question. No, it's sometimes they said it's between the hours of like oh, whatever. Yeah, they yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah. On Saturdays, right? Yeah. That's the holy day for them. Look at that. They're just chilling under there. That's nuts, dude. Just a bunch of burrowing, burrowing Jews. This kid looks very young. Yeah, huh? He looks like the youngest. This dude's bobbing his head like he's listening to music. Yeah, maybe they are. Maybe they're, they're singing. They're all there. singing. Yeah, they're just like religious extremists, I suppose. And this is as extreme. I, hey, as far as religious extremists goes, this is pretty cool. At least they're not blowing things up. We've all wanted. Listen, when I was a kid for Christmas, I always would ask for a, an underground tunnel. <laughs> I would always ask for a cool underground tunnel. To, to do whatever in. I mean, it would be my tunnel. You know, I didn't want it. I couldn't dig it myself. But these guys went ahead and they're like, let's, let's, let's really make something happen. Let's make a club. Let's make a cool club down here. That every, it's going to be like, it's like a speakeasy. It's, where they, <laughs> it's a speakeasy for Jewish people where they go, you know what? I actually really like spending money. I actually don't mind spending money. And then the other one goes, oh, yeah? Yeah, right. I actually, You know what I like? I like I like grape leaves. I like going to Middle Eastern restaurants and eating grape leaves. They go down there and they talk about all the things that, uh, 
you know, that they're not supposed to be doing. They, uh, look at that. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Jews. Where's the pizza? I don't know Jewish names. Morty. Morty, yeah, there we go. Morty, <laughs> get the pizza. <laughs> Morty and, and Groucho. Um, yeah. And so, Eli. Eli, sure. That is fun. That's fun. That's fun, man. At very least. Again, that's how you know America is the best. That's how you know America is the best. Because Jews over in Israel right now, they're not messing around, burrowing, having fun, digging a big hole like you're at the beach. Remember when you go to the beach, you're like, I want to dig the biggest hole. That's what they're doing. They're not doing that over in Israel. They're here in America. (laughs) They got the freedom to dig a hole. Um, Now, we got a little bit. A little bit more time left, and I feel like we we should bring up um, something that Whoopi Goldberg. Now we all know Whoopi Goldberg has kind of gotten a little wacky and weird these days. She, uh, in the same vein of Jews, because she is of course a Jewish woman, right? Goldberg. She uh, <laughs> she doesn't think um, you know she doesn't give a fuck about the Holocaust. You know, which we're we're all supposed to. We're all supposed to give a fuck about the Holocaust, and she doesn't. I don't know. Ex- I don't remember exactly what she said, but she she's been uh, she's been saying some wacky shit lately, and and this is this is kind of weird. Um, she's on the View. Uh, we're just a little smaller. It's not the end of the world. No worries. I'm sorry. What's interesting for me is that this is what's interesting. People's faith in the country is waning. Yes. That's the yes. that's the thing that's Hold on. Pause pissing this. me off. Pause this. The current this current uh, Whoopi Goldberg looks like she should be playing bass in a funk band. If we're being honest, <laughs> in like an old funk, but she looks like Nile Rodgers. All right, keep going. I just have to because, point that out. Because in fact, there's a reason Joe Biden ran the way he did. There's a reason he's running for democracy now. Because that's really what's at stake. You worried that it you is. can't pay your bill? Wait till he, the other guy becomes president, and you won't have to worry about it because you'll be in some camp somewhere. Because that's his promise. His promise to us is he's going to force people to do his bidding. All right, that's all right. That's what he said. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing I remember Donald Trump always saying, uh, it's that I want to put people in camps. Let's put people in camps. <laughs> Whether or not you like Donald Trump or not. Did he ever say that? No, I don't think he ever said it. Once. Okay. I don't think it was one time. I don't know if I don't know if any world leader currently. I don't know if it's a good move for them to say anything like that. Um, Sounds he, like something Biden would say, if anything. Yeah, let's put him. Obama in the actually did it. He didn't say it, but he actually fucking did it. He did. Sure. As long as Guantanamo Bay is still open, we're basically putting people in camps, regardless of who the president is. Um, that's pretty much the case. Post. Post uh, Pearl Harbor, we had people in camps too. Sure, the Asian, Japs, Asian people, people who put uh, who who built the railroads. We threw them in, in camps, um, but that was that people was t- tunnel under synagogues. <laughs> we never put them in camps, but they were put in camps by uh, a pretty a pretty ferocious guy, a guy that was pretty fucking bad. History says camps, not good. Not good, folks. Folks, we're not going to use camps. We're not going to use camps, folks. It's not the right thing. The thing about Whippy is uh, she's fat. <laughs> Maybe she should go to camp. Maybe she should go to fat camp. Maybe Whippy should go to fat camp. Maybe she should concentrate <laughs> on losing weight. How about that? How about that, Whoopi? Um, Yeah, I don't know. The fact that she, I mean, first of all, first of all, okay, Everybody hates those podcasts. Maybe not everybody, but a lot of people hates the- hate those podcasts where it's just a bunch of stupid, dumb broads and they just say nonsense. Just as much as people hate the podcasts where it's a bunch of stupid, brawlic, dumb guys who say nonsense. But The View is the original version of the stupid, dumb, horror podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the original version. The fact that The View is ever... Um, I mean, for a while, I feel like it was regarded as a place... Uh, where 
women could watch and and get a perspective on things. And and Whoopi Goldberg's always been a part of that show. I remember they used to have Rosie O'Donnell on the show, and uh, what, was, the, what was the other one? Um, Barbara Walters, I think, was on the show at one point. She's still on it now. Is she? she just is she still that? around? I thought she. No, she died. Is she dead? I think she's dead. Yeah, I should fact check that, right? Yeah, Sean Sean Connery slapped the shit out of her, and she died. <laughs> um, he, Oprah, uh, Barbara Walters, your wife. She's fucking dead, huh? Got to fuck one, marry one, kill one. Go. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> oh, That's from Step Brothers. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. I don't remember. Oh, that. yeah, she died last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she had some hilarious lines on that show, too. Hilarious lines. I remember there were t- right when the Ukraine thing happened, she was talking about, well, I hope, I hope it doesn't affect Western Europe because we were supposed to. I've been trying to go to Italy for the past three years, <laughs> and it's been problems with COVID, and now this. Oh, God, we want to go over there. Um, but the fact that Whoopi, that Whoopi Goldberg is, uh, is on The View still. I don't know who any of these other people are. No, nobody does. The, this is like, obsc- again, the stupid dumb whore podcast took over that model. And it's just, it's gotten way bigger. Nobody cares about these ladies on TV anymore. Nobody watches TV anymore. It's all a bunch of, it's, 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 it's older women. Joy Behar. Joy Behar. I know that name. Who's that's that? the one. I think that's the one who was, uh, she, but this was, that's, that's when the show was a little bit oh, better. Oh, yeah, I remember her. The show was a little bit better then. Because it was a place where women could talk about current events, and you could, and and other women could watch, and they could get a point of view from women as opposed to you know stuffy guys in a newsroom or whatever. And it was supposed to be fun and whatever. And now it's, uh, it's every other time it's Whoopi Goldberg talking about saying something completely wacky and outrageous, and um, and this is, this is it as well. I mean, I don't know if any. Again, I'll say it again. No world leader has ever professed their plan to <laughs> two and a half out of ten on IMDb. <laughs> well, who's voting? This is this is the patriarchy. That's, that's another voting. thing. People who leave reviews vote on IMDb. Probably schmucks or women, maybe because women love leaving Yelp reviews. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know. Um that show sucks. The view sucks. We could say that. <laughs> we could definitely say that. But uh yeah, I don't know if I don't definitely not Donald Trump. I don't know if an, if people would like anybody that said um that that was part of their plan deliberately. We're going to put even I don't I don't think Hitler. I don't speak German. But I don't know that Hitler said that he was going to put Jews in camps. I think he kind of ad-libbed that. Again, I don't know. We're you, not think, gonna... you think at any point like Hitler was like, what the fuck have you guys been doing? What? You guys been putting them in camps? <laughs> yeah. I guess like, I got to double down now. We didn't want to do that. Yeah, right? I never said that. I never said to do that. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be one of our episodes. We'll just break down a four-hour Hitler speech. And that's why he kills himself. He's like, oh my God, they misinterpreted me. <laughs> this is what I wanted. <laughs> they put him in camps. <laughs> He's panicking. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> He's cracked. That's why he was always on meth to cope with the fact that nobody listened to his real rules. He's like, they put him, yeah, camps, summer camps, fitness camps. <laughs> that's what I wanted. These are death camps. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, any anybody that said that their their policy any political policy that had to do with putting anybody in camps probably would have been snuffed out um, before they got anywhere close to being president, I think. So, whoa, somebody needs to eat. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> fucking starving. Oh, yes. And I think that, um, I think we should end it on that. I think that's a fun thing to end it on. We should end it on being uh, assholes to women. Maybe Hitler wasn't such a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe Hitler was just misunderstood. Maybe he, uh, maybe he, you know, it was the people around him who fucked things up. It's just like that. Do you ever watch Wild Wild Country? Did no. we talk about this? There was this cult that really had the right idea. Like, they were kind of cool. 
<laughs> they were they were like they didn't want to kill themselves. They didn't want to kill other people. They really just wanted to live in harmony and help each other and and whatever. They they had a good idea and they followed the leaders. The leader had a good idea. He was like a guru. And um they did some weird shit. Like they would they would hang out and scream naked in a room and then they would hug and whatever. Uh and then of course that would lead to a big orgy. But again, not the worst things that cults have done. <laughs> And uh, and his right hand woman, the woman who who was there when he wasn't, uh, when he was doing tours and speeches all over the world, she uh, took it off the rails and and poisoned part of the town because they moved into a town. This is uh, too long of a story to end on, but they moved <laughs> to some fuck town in Oregon. They they all just moved there, and they wanted to vote to to change the name of it to be their town and in order to do that they needed to get a certain percentage of votes so she went to like buffets and shit and restaurants all over the town and she sent people who were in the cult to go and to poison these places so people couldn't go out on voting day so that they could skew the votes and win and she got in trouble for all that and whatever so point being hitler fantastic <laughs> it was the people <laughs> it was the people around him who fucked up his message you are who you hang out with that's right and uh, and if and if we haven't gotten kicked off YouTube after this episode, then it should be coming soon. Hey, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Peace.